having a TAB in your pocket is mm. a problem if mm. you're into that because it's always there and there's always something to bet on. And that's the thing about especially Australia. It's just insane yeah. how much there is to gamble on at any moment. Anything. And it's it's evolved so much and it's yeah, it, it is scary to think about how easy it is to access right now. And um, yeah, it evolved for me because I, I used to view the TAB, like I, I hated going to the TAB. I only went because that was the only place I could actually go. I would look at the older guys in the TAB making a generalization and just think of them as so low and pathetic. Yeah. yeah I'm doing the same thing as them. I actually despised going there. So as soon as I could get on my phone or my laptop and, and do it in complete privacy, poof, I was hooked. Yeah. Absolutely. And so we're, how much was it paying you back or what happened money-wise with wins along the way? Yeah. Or I, were there times you remember where, you know, you had a big peak and you're like, all right, this is it. And then fucked it up again or not really no <laughs> i i had i had systems in my head like I've, I've i've been like i'm very um very logical in a sense which mm. is crazy to think about how much logic i put into to this but i had strategies where i would start with 50 and i would i would bet on something that was a dollar two live that was about to finish and i would keep rolling it and yeah. compounding it and i had these theories that i was going to make two million dollars in or 100 bets or 200 bets or whatever it worked out to be mm. I would, you know, fuck up after bet three or four because I would start to try and get confidence, accumulate ahead. It quicker. Yeah, and then I would just, go, oh no, I, I got away from my my um, strategy. I, yeah. I broke away from it, so I'd make excuses about why I was losing. But it's betting on things like there's a chance you're going to lose. The good <laughs> chance, yeah. So yeah, I just got, I, I just had so much belief that I could be a millionaire from this i think people who never gambled will say like oh you know you never win why would you do it mm. but well that's largely true the fact is every gambler knows you can win mm. and that you're only ever one win away from it potentially being life-changing or changing your situation mm. if you got that thought in your head it's very hard to get away from that if you never won then it would be all good mm. because you, you would know that you're never going to win. But yeah. if you have some experience with that, you know, well, uh, actually, it is possible. And then that can be like mm. a little worm in your brain. Yeah, I think there's a couple of, couple of points to that. And one is back then I thought it was about the money. I thought it was about trying to get the, you know, the, the riches and the, the fancy car and the house and all of that. Mm. I thought that that's what it was about. Looking back now and understanding through the work that I've done on myself and my own journey, I understand that I wasn't betting to make money because it doesn't matter how much I won, it would have Put continued. It, it, the, it just would have continued. The, the reason I was betting is because I was trying to escape reality. And it's like any addiction. We're doing it because we're escaping reality. It, it started, as we said, with the environment that I was in and I was betting because other people around me were betting, but I'm still using that as an excuse. I then dove into it because I wanted to get myself out of a stressful environment that I may have been in that day, and that was my way to escape reality. How did you justify it to yourself in your head through oh. those years? Or what would that voice in your head say? Oh, man, so many things. And like it was a constant cycle it was a, a cycle between hating myself for for letting people down around me for letting myself down um but then to escape that pain to escape that reality and to escape that hurt and guilt that i had and to maybe instantly fix it and yeah to to instantly try to fix that it was let's go and gamble again you know let's put in that other 50 bucks so it was only the points where i didn't have access to anything that it actually came to me that well i can't continue to do this i need to go talk to someone and get some help hmm. but you're a smart guy and i think that's another thing that's hard for people to understand if they never had any experience with it which is why would smart people get into this when they know the odds and that hmm. in the end you're going to lose why would you continue to do it how do you answer that I think that comes back to what are you escaping? Like it doesn't matter whether it's gambling, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's scrolling through social media. We're doing that to escape reality. Hmm. It's just that we've attached to that particular behavior as a, as a way to numb our pain. It's all the same part of the brain. 
you can maybe prioritize or have a um a taste for one or two of those vices and then that might change you might stop with one pick up another one instead mm-hmm. because once you've sort of woken that up whether you're totally conscious of it or not there's something inside you that demon wants to be fed mm. somehow it's the same beast wearing different clothes 100 percent, 100 percent, and you don't realize that in the moment and that's why it can be hard for people to understand gambling but i can always almost relate it to another relate voice. it to something else that they're doing too much of that's affecting their life so it can be difficult to to justify or to to allow people to understand why in particular you would go to gambling when you know the odds aren't in your favor Mm. but but it's like answering those other questions like why would you do drugs when it's potentially dangerous it's like well because i got high off it i can have it instantly yeah gives me a rush and leaves me feeling empty afterwards and you go through all of those they all have that same thing but there's something innately human in us that uh looks for that Mm. adrenaline and I don't think anyone sets out trying to be addicted to anything. <laughs> it just, they will get their hooks into you. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But especially gambling. Um, and I guess alcohol is another good example because it's acceptable mm. to a degree. It's everywhere. You know, but like it, the advertising is insane mm. on TV and you just can't go anywhere without seeing it you can't watch any sport game without it being on the court or on the Mm. field or having half time like you know which reinforces to people this is this is what you should be doing or Mm. it's all right or it's not an issue and we're not saying that any everyone who has a punt has an issue Mm. you know because that's that's not the case either but we're not saying everyone who has a drink has an issue either Mm. but these things are in our culture in our face and saying like this is a an aussie thing to do it's all good Mm. And some of the other ones, uh, you know, at least they're a lot more frowned upon. So mm. perhaps people aren't feeling, like, especially young people, you know, seeing dad have a punt and your brother has a punt. Every time you're watching the game, you're talking about the multi you've got and you're like 15, 16, mm. you'll be doing it too. Yeah, for sure. And and that brings me to, I guess, a, a moment where, where I had, where I shared with my brother and my dad when they, they couldn't understand it. My dad and my brother have a punt and... As far as I know, completely no problem there. But we had a discussion one day where um, it was it was brought up to me. Like I was I was getting triggered at the time whenever it was getting told. So I shared with them, you know, to support me, it'd be great if you didn't talk about gambling or what you're betting on in front of me. And not long after, Dad did just you know wasn't aware of it, but did it. And I brought that up to my brother when I was having a coffee with him and. His, his reaction to me at that point was, well, you've got to get used to it because it is everywhere. And I'm completely understanding and aware of that. But my response was, well, let's consider I was addicted to heroin. Would you talk about heroin and heroin use in front of me? And his response was, is, well, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where for me there's a lot of, and this is like my brother and my dad, they only know what they know. So... You know the tools that they've got are the tools that they've got but this is where it comes back to education in society around you know if someone's if that's someone's way of support by not talking about it understand that but also we've got to understand how big of a problem as you mentioned like gambling advertising is everywhere you can't watch sport without seeing odds or without a, a celebrity giving you advice essentially on what you should bet on so it's extremely difficult for people to break away I mean, from one that of the habit. bookies is the official partner of the afl yeah right you know which is these are are organizations that young men in particular look to for for guidance and leadership mm. and those uh, organizations are saying yeah we not only think this is all right we mm. fully endorse it we raise the question why is there so much um like why why are you still continuing with that relationship with that agency and the response was well there's so much money until there's a major problem why would we uh, cut them mm. so it's the hard thing is is to determine how much of a problem problem gambling is mm. and then yeah it's a hard argument to make to say that it should be stopped mm. as well because again you can go to alcohol and say well uh alcohol does a lot of damage mm. also brings in a lot of money mm. are we going to stop doing that mm. you know and it, does someone who has a problem with gambling have the same problem with alcohol and how do you argue one's worse than the other it's yeah. a tough 